Hi Grant and welcome. How are you doing today? Thank Kyra. Yeah, no, good good to be here. Sun shining. Things are crazy, but good. Yeah. Yeah, well thank you very much for um for joining me. And welcome to those of you watching us here in what is called the Soda Community Catch Up series. I'm Kyra, uh, the Soda Comms and Events Coordinator, and I'm here with Grant Johnson, uh, co founder of Rocket Spark. Rocket Spark is a massive supporter of Soda. We um, have had them sponsor several of our clients to, to help them get their websites up and running, as well, they have also sponsored our NZ Startup Bootcamp for the past two years. Uh, for those of you who don't know Rocket Spark, um, Rocket Spark is a beautif beautifully simple website builder that enables non technical business owners to make their own website. From their HQ in Cambridge, New Zealand, the Rocket Spark team have built a client base around the world and continue to innovate as they develop their world class platform. Born and educated in Waikato, Grant's career prior to Rocket Spark was primarily in marketing roles in New Zealand and the United Kingdom with roles in large corporates and startups. Grant returned to New Zealand in 2017 after launching Rocket Spark in the United Kingdom. It's so nice to have you here, Grant. To kick us off, I wondered if you could tell me how is Rocket Spark doing in the face of COVID-19? Yeah, we're, we're doing really well actually is when when we first heard about um a lockdown happening and some of our clients are in sort of hospitality and tourism and sort of personal services like here in beauty massage that's something we're like flip what's what's this going to be like because those businesses just can't can't trade and and they can't operate and yeah that was that was pretty crazy but what we've seen come out is there's been so many other businesses um get launched or just adapt as well from where they've taken and look, looked at kind of what was happening in their business and, and the kind of the, the innovators are actually thriving like it's it's almost like a bit of a digital gold rush amongst those that are kind of out there and and doing stuff so yeah so tired but but good because we've, we've never been been busier um and never had as many people sign up to free trials to build websites it's going to be a record month in terms of people upgrading to become paid customers as well, which is kind of nuts. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty incredible given the, the time and, and you know, you hear about other businesses having the opposite things going on at the moment. So really cool that you guys are taking off. That's, that's awesome. Um, are you seeing lots of innovation in businesses through e-commerce because of it? Um, what kind of pivots are you seeing for, for businesses who wouldn't have been possibly doing this kind of thing? Yeah, there's um there's there's been a, there's been a heap. So you probably have to yeah probably hit the pause button and tell me to shut up when, but you know, I think of say a business like um they're actually in the paper with with their story, but the business a client of ours, long term client called Fiasco, and they're making road cases for events. You know the big black boxes that they kind of reel in at events and pop out microphones and cables and stuff. And um, their business just you know orders just were cancelled, stopped overnight in terms of as as the world kind of went into lockdown. And they basically stood up a new business within a week where they, they brainstorm what can we use this capability for cutting out plywood and, and that, and basically set up this business called Work From Home Desks to sell um, basically standing desks or sit, sit and stand desks of different heights. And then they've launched the kids range as well. Yeah. And I actually interviewed Joe, one of the co-owners um, last week for a series we're doing to start telling some of these stories. And, and he, he was, the way I was describing it, it was like, like, like you know, probably by now they'll be back to where where they were, if not better. And you know, at that stage, they were kind of getting pretty close. So so there's that, and we've seen, um, say, little like baker, like a baker um, was another story we've told where um, never had sold online, really thought they needed a website. Mm. Um, it's actually my sister-in-law's business, and she kind of humored me with having, you know, having this, um, having even just the landing page that she hadn't updated in two years. And then, as soon as they realized they could start trading, they, they set up an online store and they did one Instagram post and sold out their entire day's bake that they were planning for the next day um, in just over two hours. So yeah, two, two and a quarter hours that they've, they've sold out. So, and, and probably a little homeware store where they put together an essentials range um, that they could sell and that what they've been selling exceeds what they were doing before. So. Wow. So by, by several factors and pro 
one last one actually is the is the sort of organic food box people so we have a client uh, six toad fox organics is, is one example and they use our platform to sell subscription food boxes and because of everyone's seen the nightmare stories and probably experienced it at the supermarkets the idea of having fresh organic produce arrive at your door and i see on their website they've now restricted their range to just a box like if you order their subscription subscription box that's it you can't buy just a bag of carrots or just the cabbage or whatever you have to buy the sort of 40 to 60 dollar box of veggies so yeah the, the innovators that that moved quickly and adapted um they're doing ridiculously well and then probably the other thing is that the good businesses that you know that there's a lot of people working on their websites we've had like b and b's create websites now which is kind of nuts but they're just kind of well actually using this time and downtime to actually do some of the marketing activities that that they weren't sort of doing before so yeah yeah cool. lots on the go yeah for sure so uh, we know everyone's been affected by it in varying ways as you've just touched on um do you see do you, have you seen any insight into what sectors are seeing greater opportunities and which are, are having to totally start again yeah the um it, if you were able to sell like in particularly in the new zealand context during the lockdown you you did very very well like um actually I've, i just showed someone it's pretty old school but look that's kind of the trend and um that's christmas so normally which is like a massive peak and and that's kind of as of yesterday in terms of weekly sales through the platform. So those that could trade, so that also includes the people that weren't able to trade. So some of the clothing suppliers that, you know, that, that, that weren't classed as essential. Um, so that's just the people that could trade and it's just smashing Christmas out of the park, which is kind of, is kind of nuts. Yeah. Um, even probably I've seen uh, like here in beauty, like which is any personal service is just tough, you know, in terms of, we had like probably one of the first clients to contact us through the customer support um, team was mobile massage. You know, they just couldn't, they just couldn't do it. Um, mobile massage business in Australia, you know, just had to um, sort of put, put pause, but then some of the personal services businesses like, um, so like Lulu's, like one of our team, it's actually her um, stepmom is um, owns Lulu's a really nice kind of here in beauty day spa kind of in Cambridge. And Lulu's have set up an online store for their kind of got really good range of sort of high end shampoos and conditioners and things. And so, so while it's not anywhere near restoring what they, you know, the, the business I've lost, they're generating some income at this time, probably clearing some stock. And I heard, you know, that you, um, Angelique was actually getting some more stock in, um, you know, in terms of gearing up. So yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's some good, there's still some things happening even amongst those that, that can't trade, but obviously those, there's a lot that have just been, been really, you know, severely impacted and just kind of fattening down the hatches and just seeing what they can do. And actually probably one last example on that is, is the fitness. So we have quite a lot of people in the fitness sector yeah. and we had one um, client who, you know, she had a little, or she has a little fitness studio, which obviously suddenly you have to close the doors. And she set up an online version of that class. And, and I think it was like within a day, she had um, 20 subscribers. And so if you think about it, if you have 20 subscribers paying 20 bucks a week for one class a week, 20 times 20 is 400 bucks. It's kind of not, not a bad hourly rate. And if you can actually do a few more of those classes and your reach, because it was quite a specialized type of fitness, if your reach then is around the world, suddenly you could be having people on subscription and still just as one instructor and you're no longer constrained by sort of the four walls of your of your studio so yeah again another for those that are yeah we're seeing the bad stories so i don't want to kind of gloss over it we're seeing people that you know kind of really their business has been hammered but we're also seeing some pretty cool stories of people innovating and and adapting and yeah yeah, probably that's where you probably want to hit pause because I could just, I get pretty excited by it and, and yeah. motivated by seeing people that are doing doing pretty cool stuff. Yeah, fair. So that's really cool. Uh, do you, do you think we really understand the implications to our way of life and how we consume yet, the way that it, that, that might change? It's changed, like, probably just looking at my mum as, as an example, late 60s. Um, she would have bought stuff online or maybe booked the odd, you know, accommodation or something but 
you know, her groceries are turning up and she ordered from a local butcher, um, a local baker. And, and these are things she's ordering online and, and coming. So it's shifted her behavior. And last night she sent me a picture from, you know, she'd had a dinner arrive from Alpha Street Kitchen, another Cambridge business, client of ours had actually set up um, an online store to start selling kind of basically a, a, like a fine dining or sort of like really high quality food, but we could get it at home and just seeing the pent up demand. Like we see people queuing up at the McDonald's and mm. uh, KFC and I see burger fuels in the paper for doing naughty things or something, but you know, but also these, these good restaurants are actually creating online offerings and uh, yeah, it's, it's cool. Like just to see what, what people are creating. So there's behavior that's, that's changed and people and i think the other thing is probably just the remote working idea like at um in rocket spark we've been in the early days we were just remote like spending money on an office just seemed like a complete waste of mm. of space and now we spend quite a lot of money on an, on, on an office like um but we've kind of got the team you know have just slotted into working from home kind of environment and i think probably companies that maybe have been a bit more traditional in their outlook and needing people at their desks mm. i think there could be a shift into it it's like actually we can run our business and people can we can give them the space then to work at home like some of the developers were talking the other day they actually they enjoy kind of the, the peace and quiet where they can just focus in on their their work and and the team have never worked harder so that it's not like you know they just if you get good people that are self-motivated yeah. um yeah you know, it's that's probably been a cool thing is it you know is you know one of the you know, i'm just one of four that that um, founded and, and owned Rocket Spark, but just having a, a business where the team have just come along the journey with us, where they're like, "What can we do?" You know, and just um, and just bending over backwards to make it happen, and, and not just for for us as a business, but probably even more so, they're feeling it for our clients, the ones that have had had a kick in the guts and they can't, you know, trade and and with the hospitality sort of sector, which is a lot of our, our clients. Um, you know, the team worked all, all Anzac weekend to, to get this kind of proposition for online ordering where they could just bolt it onto their current website and then set hours. You know, I'm going to Alpha Street Kitchen. I'm going to have hours between you know, midday and 10 o'clock is the kitchen hours and just being able to set a few things like that. Mm. And so that's opened up a whole new proposition for us, but to help our clients. But then we've had a bunch of new people sign up and, and join too. So, yeah it's fun yeah that's cool um so how has this change impacted your day in life at rocket spark i guess you just touched on that a little bit there but regarding the conversations and outreach you have had uh towards the businesses you work with how has it affected that yeah so at the, at the start we were kind of freaked out in terms of what what um what's going to happen to our clients and then in turn what's going to then happen to us as a business and then what's then going to be the implications for our team you know, that's kind of, you know, we've got a, we've got a pretty like an awesome team of people that you know, as a business owner, that was kind of like pretty high on the list of like, how do we make sure that we've still got jobs and income and, and that sort of thing. But once we kind of realized that actually, you know, we're in pretty good shape, we, we set about creating a lot of content just to help clients. You know, what should you do with your website if you can't actually trade? You know, what, what are the things you should do? If, if you can trade, what are the things you should say? Um, and, and running online classes because there's so many people wanting to set things up and fast. So, and we've put on extra support hours in the evening so that people, they're kind of, when they're just desperate to get a, a business up and running. Um, and, and also because the demand has been so high, all of our development team, um, marketing team, they're all trained to use our customer support systems. So it means that we, um, we're able to keep the standards pretty high in terms of responding to people because nothing worse than when they're desperate to get something live and you know we go a wall because we're getting getting swamped um, with people so yeah so that's probably been yeah probably a key change is just and you're just just working just flat out uh, producing content running classes and and that sort of thing yeah and has that affected you personally as well? I mean, it's affected everybody, but having this extra workload, I mean, how's that, how's that going for the home life? Yeah, at the, at the start, it was because um, like the, the, the sort of phases was like the freak out of like, oh, this is, this, <laughs> this can't be real. You know, this is, this doesn't feel real, but actually New Zealand as a business is shutting up shop. UK, like our main markets, New Zealand, Australia, UK, and they all kind of have lockdown to, 
to some extent. And the first stage was, was freak out. And then it's like, okay, what are we going to do? So then it was, it was actually, it was hard to switch off. So I was like waking up at like 4.30 in the morning, just with my mind, just like racing about all the things to kind of just make sure that we were looking after clients and, and kind of businesses as is running. And then as these kind of, you know, people responding to the content we we're producing and there were new businesses starting up, then it was kind of this excitement of like, flip, there's, there's whole new markets opening up, restaurants that never would have done online sales before are now doing online sales. So then it was like waking up at 5.30 in the morning with like all the ideas brimming in my head in terms of all the stuff that we had to do. So when it is sort of, yeah, fast paced and there's lots happening and lots happening with the team and, and even... We, I reached out to stuff um, just to say, hey, we, there's some cool stories happening here. We just like to tell the stories of these businesses and, and what's happening. And then, and then out of that, then other people reached out to say, hey, can you come and talk to my community and come and you know help help them? So there's kind of been multiple ones of those. So and, that, and that's been like I get you know, even doing this call just to kind of I get excited by it to hopefully motivate other people to say, hey, yeah. Things have changed, but what are the opportunities coming out if you're thinking you know, critically? And I guess that's where you guys are so well placed that people are sort of dipping their toes into into new businesses where they're sort of maybe they've they've lost their job, but they've got real expertise and 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 actually, but they've, they've never run a business before. And you know, I know that you, you haven't even pre-briefed me on a plug for you guys, but it's actually getting the right sort of support in terms of to start something up and to get if because if you get yeah, you know, we made so many mistakes starting out that. If um you know we had had just the right the right guidance and I've sat in on one of one of your kind of classes with as you're doing it collectively, and you know that's it's pretty cool yeah so actually there's there's a plug for you in terms of you know, get get help. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's awesome. Actually, brings me to my last question. Uh, what's the vibe and coverage amongst businesses? Uh, do you think? the the growth we've seen you know in the past few years will will continue as it has been yeah i think i think there's going to be some fundamental shifts um in terms of like some businesses that are trading online and had not traded online previously kind of actually recognizing the opportunity there and, and chatting with like it's real early days say but chatting to fiona messi who runs alpha strip kitchen as an example it's like actually maybe this could carry on you know in terms of people maybe there is a market for sort of high-end dining at, at home mm. um, um the chamber of commerce team in, in cambridge so home base we kind of had good good connections with them and they've been really great in terms of sort of joining the dots together for for businesses in the area so it's probably just another tip really is kind of connect with your local business associations you know there's the um the waikato chamber of commerce cambridge chamber of commerce um you know, those kind of organisations and just, just check out the advice. Uh, Te Waka is the regional um, economic development agency. Um, kind of connect in um, with those sort of organisations to help. Yeah, there's lots there. And, and oh, in terms of, I didn't actually kind of, in terms of the general vibe, I think the businesses that are kind of are well funded and have a good proposition, what, what we see is, because like with Rocket Spike, it's like 40 bucks a month or for the top plan, it's like a hundred bucks a month. So a good business is not going to live or die on, on 40 bucks a month. So, you know, most of them that are good businesses. So we're not seeing those people shut up their website. They've spent too much time kind of getting their business going that, you know, there's bigger, you know, ways to save money than, than rocket spikes. So we're kind of, and then the ones that um, have closed down for a lot of them, it's kind of actually my business just wasn't, wasn't super great beforehand and I was kind of maybe on the fence of whether I continue on. And so it's kind of like, this is a, a sort of, I guess a, a pretty solid mark in the sand in terms of, are they going to continue mm. on or not? So it's probably more those, and some people are just really strapped for cash. They've had, you know, partners lost their jobs and they've, you know, they're consulting and they've lost them. You know, we've done a few things to help them out there, but yeah, we're, we're, may, we're probably a little bit immune to it in some ways, but the good businesses are continuing on and, and the ones that are maybe not so viable um, are kind of reassessing their position and, and then maybe not continuing on. Mm. That's cool. Uh, thank you, Grant. Thanks so much for, for stopping by and, and chatting with me and just giving all of that information so freely. It's really awesome to, to chat with you as always. Did you have anything else that you wanted to, to add? Uh, no, probably just 
yeah, the, the world is changing. The whole macro macroeconomic environment, yes, the world we live in is changing. And if I think if you're smart and 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 look at the opportunities and and talk to people, you know, understand the market that's there, and actually just give it a crack, you know, just just give it a go, and and don't die wondering. Just actually just try something because. You know, some of our business owners they're not they're not super sophisticated and, and may not be even the sharpest tool in the shed, but that the difference is they just give it a go. They just they just try it. So that's probably my last yeah thing to share is yeah, don't die wondering. Perfect. Thank you so much, Grant. Um, and I'll I'll be in touch with you soon. Cheers. Thanks, Kai. Good luck, everyone. Bye bye.